Hi, it's a Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I thought it would be fun, and this was kind of hard for me to do, I'm going to be honest, to go through my collection and kind of pull what is currently like my top faves. And these would be the products that if for whatever reason I lost all of my makeup, these would be my first purchases. Now, this doesn't mean that if I've liked something in the past, I still don't like it because, oh, I've got a lot of favorites. I do, and I'm one. Of, I'm the person who wants options. But if I had to quickly get something together, this is what I would do. This is not the sort of video where I could walk into an Ulta or a Sephora and like just get the bare bones. This is kind of like the top of the top. This is what I would get. Let's start. First thing I thought, I am not really much of a primer girl, but guess what has been changing my mind? This iconic London underglow. It's a blurring primer. It's got a little bit of luminance in it. Look, I've already used a quarter of this. I haven't had it that long. I actually like it a lot. I think it's really beautiful. Um, and for me, it's the slight smoothing and blurring that it does on the skin while having such a small amount of glow to it. It's such a pretty product. Now, do I use it every day? No, I don't. Um, but it makes my skin, when I do wear it, look so pretty. And there have been days that I wear it just over the top of my sunscreen, and it's so nice. So I think that if I were to go and get a primer, I'd probably get this one. I saw that they just launched like a blurring, kind of more like a putty type primer in a squeezy tube, and I was like, ooh. I don't know. That one kind of has my interest, but I don't, I'm not a primer girl. Just keep that in mind. All right, from there, the one thing I cannot go without is an under eye corrector. I use corrector under the eyes because I have, the older I get, the more my tear troughs become a little bit more hollowed, a little bit more sunken. And that skin underneath the eyes is so thin. You can always, always, always see kind of like that purpley blue look under my eyes. I just have really dark, prominent under eye circles. And this kind of surprised me because I have for years loved the one from Beauty Pie. I think I would grab this. This is the Bobbi Brown Corrector Stick. Part of it is because it's not as emollient. Now, I know that as I get older, I do like hydration under the eyes, lest I look like a corpse. You know, I don't wanna look like a dried out, terrible situation underneath the eyes, but this is not drying but it's also not so emollient that everything I lay over it, because I already have an eye cream down, I have sunscreen on, then if I put this on, um, it's nice because it's not adding so much more hydration to the situation, whereas my other previous favorite um, is so emollient that I would find product kind of settling into my line. So I have to walk that balance of, Color, covering up the discoloration without adding too much hydration, but it can't be drying because if it's drying, ugh, you know, but I feel like the texture of this, this is really good. This also comes in a wide variety of shades, more shades than my Beauty Pie favorite. Now, if you are on Beauty Pie and you're making a purchase, their Wonder Glow Under Eye Genius is so good. I like it, but do you see how much glowier it is in the pot? This is my third pot of this and I'm like, uh, probably at least a third of the way through. It's not that I don't like that. It's not that I don't recommend that. But right now, I just can't stop reaching for this. And I think that the minute my hand automatically reaches for something, that says a lot. I don't know why it took me so long to try this foundation, but since I've been trying this foundation, this is the one that I would like walk into the store and purchase right now. This is the light reflecting from NARS. Okay. I don't know that they have the best shade range. This is the shade Mont Blanc, and it's actually a really good shade match. It's just a, just a hair too dark, but you know what? Nothing that a damp sponge can't take care of. I feel like a damp sponge is the best way. When I blend this in with a brush or with my fingers, it does an okay job, but there's something about blending it in with a damp sponge for the type of coverage I like. I want it to look like my skin. I want it to look evened out. I don't want to completely obliterate every little speckle and spot on my face because I want it to look, you know, I, I shouldn't say natural because if I wanted to look natural, I wouldn't be wearing makeup, <laughs> okay? But I want it to look perfected. And I feel like I'm getting just the right level of pigmentation without crossing that line over into things being too 
heavy. Um, I like medium coverage, kind of medium to light coverage, um, but I, I think that this light reflecting foundation is so good, especially on my 49 year old skin. It's beautiful, it wears well. I just wish the colors weren't quite as warm leaning. There are days when I wanna wear a stick foundation. And I feel like if you get the right formula of stick foundation, it can look really light and it can look really beautiful and skin-like, but still give you that really um, nice coverage where you want it, thinned out where you don't, and then it lasts really, really well. Now, this was hard for me <laughs> because I've tried a lot of stick foundations, but the only two that I still have in my collection, um, one is because the shade match is perfect. It's what I'm wearing today. It's the Bosma Stick Foundation. I wear the shade uh, 38, and this is my perfect shade. Because once I start to blend it, it's like, where did it go? It's not too heavy, um, it's not too creamy. I think this would work for people um, of various skin types. I think it's a really beautiful formula. The one that I, I like the formula just a hair more, but there aren't as many shades, is the Merit Minimalist because this doesn't really look like makeup on my face. I can use this under the eyes. I have the lightest shade here. This is the shade Bone, um, but it is just a hair darker, you can see, than the one from Bosma. So it's more perceptible on my face. You can definitely see where it ends. So for me, it's the shade range from Bosma, but the formula of Merit's Minimalist. If you have a perfect match, I would say Merit. But if you don't, I feel like there's just more options color-wise from Bosma. The texture is really great. This has a really lovely magnetic closure to it. It feels really luxe, and this bright pink packaging is super fun. I've tried a, t a ton of concealers. I feel like I'm always on the hunt for the one concealer that's gonna work like magic like no other. And the one that has impressed me so much, so much, I finally had to put it in my drawer. I'm like, you can't use it, you gotta use other things, is this. Okay, so this is the High Glam Concealer from Natasha Denona. I have the shade N1. It's the lightest neutral shade. They have an RN1, which is a rosy neutral, but they're about the same level of lightness. One just has more pink to it. This. This can do no wrong in my mind. I, first of all, I like this little um, kind of angled applicator. This is one of those products that you don't need a lot. I feel like they probably could lighten up the shade range a little bit, um, but this shade here uh, works really well for me. This is fantastic because it's heavy coverage without being drying. The last thing I need is something that's gonna suck the life out of my under eyes. That, that skin, like right in this area, it's always like a, it feels like a crapshoot. Am I having a good day? Am I having a bad day? I don't know, let's roll the dice and find out. But I find that when I get the right type of formulas, where it's not drying, but it's not overly creamy, I feel like that's what this does. This walks the line of giving you coverage, making sure it's moisturizing, but it's not so moisturizing that it's kind of slipping around. That's what I like about this. And there's a lot of shades. They also do correctors in this line. I haven't tried the correctors, because I feel like the one that, they think is for my fair skin is might be too dark. I don't know. But this obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. This is my second tube of it because my first tube I was more than halfway done and then it just disappeared. I was like, wait, what happened? My teenager, my oldest, took it and I was like, what is my Natasha Genona concealer doing in your room? She's like, mom, it's the only one that works. And she has those same dark circles that I do. I was like, okay, fine, I'll order myself another. Um, but obsessed obsessed. I love powder, but it has to be the perfect powder. It has to be a powder that looks weightless. It has to be a powder that doesn't add any texture to my skin, that if on top of that can be slightly radiant and a little bit blurring, that's what I want. I want basically utter perfection. <laughs> and I feel like it's kind of a hard ask. Um, there are so many wonderful powders out there, but I always am looking for a powder that I can use not just to set my under eye, because I have lots of under eye setting powders. I have the one from Charlotte Tilbury. I have the one from Pat McGrath. Like I have a lot of those. And a lot of ones that I feel like because of their smaller size, I'll use them just for that. But I want a powder that I can put everywhere, that it's not gonna make my under eye look dry or wrinkled. 
um, one that is actually going to keep the rest of my face set on the days that I want to powder my full face and wear powder cheek products or if I just want to do my t-zone and my under eyes these are the ones that I can't live without first one here is from beauty pride look how look how okay we clean it up a little bit I'm like look how used and abused she is this is the one powder wonder in the shade uber lucent universal this I think is my fourth compact I have a backup of it because I don't want to be without it it's got a enormous divot in it like my finger goes way down to the middle and I know it looks scary white but do you see how there's a little bit of radiance on my finger but once you blend it in it's almost like you can't see it so this has a very similar kind of glow that you would find in an hourglass ambient powder it's so finely milled it's a baked powder too so I feel like it's one of those that works in a very similar way to the hourglass ambient lighting powders but it's less expensive. This is $14. So for me, it's not the $14. It's that this looks like nothing under my eyes and it sets my whole face in the wintertime, in the summertime, everything stays where it's supposed to. I really like this powder. This is kind of like the, I mean, when I was thinking about it, it's like I could pull out a Charlotte Tilbury, like for pressed powder, this is what I'm going for. Now, if I'm on a loose powder, oh, she's bougie, but she's worth every penny. I need to get a full size of this. This is the mini, but this is the Givenchy Prisma Lee powder. This is in the shade 03 Wall Rosé, and it is the most beautiful pink leaning powder. But I feel like even though I have fair skin, I can use this not just under the eyes, but everywhere. And it does bring blurring, and it does mattify without looking heavy. So uh, if I ever feel like I have too much shine right in through here, I can just lightly tap some of this on, either with a velour puff or with a brush and it just kind of brings down some of that um, glow because I like the glow here but I don't always want it right here or if I have something going on in the middle of my forehead this is beautiful everywhere this is again like the other one undetectable under the eyes doesn't add texture doesn't age me oh my goodness these two I was like okay pressed loose that's it for bronzer it's bougie, it's expensive, it's maybe even unnecessary, but it's the one I reach for the most. It's the Gucci bronzer. This is the shade 01. It has a little bit of a pink tint to it. And on my fair skin, I can wear just this and it looks fabulous. So powder bronzer, but if I'm going for a cream product, oh, hello, Makeup by Mario. This skin enhancer, oh, I love it. Mine also, again, another one that has like a big divot here in the middle. My brush is constantly in this. I love how this is like, I just put a swatch of it here, but it ends up so lightweight. Both of these you can apply with reckless abandon and you're not gonna end up looking like you're from the Jersey Shore. And I should also say nothing wrong with the Jersey Shore, but I remember all of those fake tans from the late 90s, early 2000s. <laughs> No, and, and that's why for years I didn't wear bronzer. I needed bronzers that were lighter weight, that weren't too heavy, that weren't too pigmented. These two are beautiful. So blush, both come from the same company. If I want a powder blush, I am obsessed with the ones from M. These are the Heaven's Glow Baked Blushes. These have a little bit of radiance to them, and this shade here in Baroque would probably be the first one I would pick up. Uh, I love the fact that it has a little bit of glow, but not too much. It's a really soft, almost kind of beigey shade with a little bit of a peach undertone, but it brings a beautiful life to the face without being too heavy. Um, and if I were going for a cream blush, there's only two shades of this, but I can't stop reaching for them. I can't, these are the Pillow Plus blushes from M. I feel like M does blush really well. This is the shade Tickled. I'm wearing some of this today along with the Danessa Myricks. Um, her balm powder blush which again I love but this one right here the one in peanut I'm almost like at the bottom of the pan in the center this one also another one that has a very significant divot in it I I love this product because it has kind of like if you're familiar with the ColourPop um, Super Shock formula this is not quite as squishy as that and it doesn't dry out the way the eyeshadows do but this is one of those products that looks when you blend it on, like a, a beautiful blurred nothing. You can use your finger, you can use a brush, you can use the little puff that they send with it. But I get the most beautiful, not over blushed, 
looks when I use these. I can't stop using the one in peanut. And I was like, I, maybe I'd want to get peanut, but I probably wouldn't want two warm toned blushes. But like, do you see like I'm almost at the bottom here. I, I, I love, I love, I love this formula is my new obsession. It's my new favorite. So I would probably go cool toned blush, you know, in tickled and then the warm toned blush in Baroque. But I really do count on M for they have some of my favorite blush for highlight. I want a highlight that is beautiful. I want a highlight that's not gonna emphasize my texture. I want a highlight that makes me glow, but like a lot. So the first one I thought about instantly is this one here from Rare Beauty. My favorite one is the pink shade. This one here is the shade Mesmerize. It's so pretty, but they're super delicate. Like you have to be careful. I mean, look at that. The, the reflection on this is insane can't drop these. I dropped one once. I'm like, my desk is over carpet. It hit the carpet and it shattered. <laughs> so the one, the white one, I forget what the name of it is, Enliven or whatever. It sh I had to repress it. Um, but they're, they're the sort you look at them cross-eyed and they'll break. That's the only downside to them. But the glow is out of this world. And I thought, do I want a cream bronze? No, 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 no. And then I was thinking if I was going to do, would I do a cream or a liquid? liquid all the way. And it would be the Lisa Eldridge um, Seamless Skin Elevated Glow. This is my favorite shade. This is the shade Crystal Nebula. It's a little bit warmer. There is a shade that's a little bit lighter. When she first launched these, this was the lightest shade she had. But this is the sort of glow that on my skin, it looks like it's a lot. But when you tap it on the high points of your face, there's no shimmer. There's no sparkle. There's no glitter. This is your I just got back from a spa rich lady look. <laughs> uh, my skin has never looked better and aren't you blessed to witness this moment? <laughs> like that's what this gives and that's what I want. This is one of my favorite, favorite products. Love it so much. I know it's expensive. It does come in a lot of shades, but to me it's worth it. I have three shades. I like it that much. This would be the first, like instead of going for a cream highlight, I go for this. Like, yes, first thing I would do. All right, let's talk about eyes. I kind of broke this down into separate categories because I don't really like a huge palette, but I thought what would be the first, like if I wanted an eyeshadow single, what would I get? Just like one single shadow for an everyday look. Um, if I was looking for a small palette, I'm choosing something itsy bitsy, and then like my regular size palette. So this might be small for you, but the palette I would choose like hands down, I'd like order it stat would be this. I have the old packaging of the Enduring Love palette from Sydney Grace. All right, so for me, it's the finishes. Um, I love the metallics in here and the mattes are beautiful. I like that also like these shades in through here are slightly on the cool side. You do have some pops of color. Um, this grungy shade here is stunning. Um, mine has been used and abused. I've had this since they first launched it and I can't stop reaching for it still to this day. This shade right here in Devotion is I mean look at that is my favorite shade and I can do a one shadow look with this. So for me you know, this number of shades is just enough to be my big palette. And it has some warms, it has some cools, it has some pops of color. I'm kind of gravitating more towards cooler shades and there's plenty of those in here. And that would be great to like give me a wide variety of looks. Now, if I was looking for a small edited palette, right here. This is the new um, Pedophor Praline Epice from Viseart. This was new kind of like for holiday, now, I love the original praline. The original praline is beautiful. It has a lot more warm tones in it. And here we're getting kind of like a um, mid-toned neutral looking brown and this cooler metallic. These two guys down here lean warm. This gives the most beautiful, and I like to call them boring Betty eye looks, but so solid. I can count, I can use one shade, I can use two shades, I can use all four shades. I love this palette so much. I think this is exactly the sort of like no brainer for me. I, I don't want to think too hard. This is what I want. Now, if I'm going to do a one and done eyeshadow look where I have time for one thing, this is what I'm getting. <laughs> We're halfway done with this. This is the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lorex. This is the shade Bianca. This is such a beautiful kind of like a shell pink shade. What I like about this is that once this dries, it dries. 
it doesn't ever settle into my um, look, look. It doesn't ever settle into the creases of my eye. It doesn't travel. There's no fallout from this. And this shade right here, I have used it with a bright red lip. I've used it with a nude lip. I've used it with like any anything. It looks beautiful. So for me, it's a light wash of this, keeping it mostly to the lid, just like a super quick like dot of shadow and then use my finger to blend it out, throw on some mascara and run. This is the eyeshadow I'm reaching for. I love eyeliner. Uh, for years I didn't wear eyeliner because I have a leaky left eye and it's forever like messing up my eyeliner. I just realized I was wearing the wrong ones. So the ones that work best for me, and I don't even know how many of these I've gone through at this point. I have it both in black and in brown. This is the liquid liner from M Cosmetics. This is their illustrative liner. It is a brush tip pen. You get the most beautiful lines from this and depending on how much you push, it's either thick or thin. This is great. This doesn't find all of those little fine lines and kind of spider out. Um, it lasts a really long time. It's not completely waterproof, but I find that if I'm keeping this right above my lash line and going up this way, it does beautifully all day. The other thing I like to do is to take this little teeny tiny tip here and kind of go right in between where the lashes are growing out of my eyelid because I do have sometimes gaps in there. And just kind of using this to place a dot of darkness in between the lashes, not in the tight line, but just like in between the lashes makes my lash line look that much better. My favorite gel liner right now, oh my goodness, I haven't had this this long and I, I, I got the brown one, I got the black one. Like if they come out with more colors, I'm getting it. It's the one size point made gel liner. This is the shade Busty Brown. This glides so beautifully. And this stays, when I put it in my upper waterline, I'm wearing it in my upper waterline today, it stays there and when I blink it doesn't transfer to the lower waterline. I'm always looking for that. This is not hard, um, it's not uncomfortable, um, it works great above the lash line. This is not just a waterline only pencil, you can use this eye pencil for anything. It is remarkably good and it stays. This one though is waterproof. Like when my left eye gets going and um, I'm crying, it doesn't eat through my eyeliner. I can do whatever I want. This isn't going anywhere. It doesn't give as fine a tip as, you know, a liquid liner with a brush tip, but I use them in tandem, this above the lash line, this like in the water line, and then um, kind of in between the lashes as well. I think this is the perfect combo, but these are the two formulas I'm going back for. And I have both colors in both formulas. For mascara, I was thinking about it. If I was going to wear a regular mascara formula, the one that I'm always buying and have been obsessed with since it came out in 2017 is Lancome with Monsieur Big. This is because I get the right amount of volume. I get the right amount of um, kind of intensity and length from this. When I wear this, I get really beautiful, extremely dramatic lashes. Oh, so good. Um, I have probably three unopened tubes. I'm looking at a, a container over here that has all of my unopened mascara. I think I have three more tubes of this just waiting because I have not been without a tube of this since I started wearing it in 2017, okay? It's been a long time. It's so good, it's totally worth it. Now here's one that I haven't opened yet because I have too many mascaras open right now and I told myself you can't open another one, but you know my love for a tubing mascara. And the one mascara that I would, this is a more affordable product, but the one tubing mascara that I would be like, I need a regular formula and a tubing formula, and it would be this one from Hamish. Hamish is a Korean brand. This is their Smudge Stop mascara. It comes in two options. You have the, the volume one, and then they're just regular uh, Smudge Stop. So the Smudge Stop one is the one that has like the slightly curled wand to it. And as you're going through, it, it actually helps to hold a curl. I don't always curl my lashes when I wear this one. It lasts all day, doesn't crumble, doesn't smudge, doesn't transfer, and at the end of the day, it comes off with warm water, and it looks like little spider legs at the bottom of the sink. Super easy to take off. I love how good a tubing mascara formula this is. Stays on until you wanna take it off. I have yet to try the volume one, 
but I cannot wait. Um, this has a different type of wand. It doesn't have the curved wand. It has kind of more of like a big fluffy wand, like the one from Monsieur Big. I'm not gonna open it to show you because I wanna keep it ready for when I'm ready to crack into it. But these are usually about $14. Sometimes you can get them on sale. I got a second one of these because they were half off. They were $7. I was like, oh uh, yeah, please uh, put one in my order. So this is the other mascara that I always, always have on hand for a tubing mascara. I like the one from Thrive. I like the one from M. Um, I like the new one from Elf. There's a lot of good ones out there, but if I had to choose one, Hamish. I'm trying a couple of different brow products right now, and um, so I'm not using these, but if I want absolutely perfect brows that are going to be like not too much and just enough, it's this duo right here. This is from M Cosmetics. This is their fine liner brush. Um, this is the shade Deep Taupe. I talk about this so often. It is a little teeny tiny pencil. It looks kind of like a dash one way, but it's so skinny. And it gives the perfect little teeny tiny lines. These look like little tiny hair strokes. And because it's not round, it looks more like and the other thing that I love about this is the texture. The texture is so good. It's some um, formulas can be a little too waxy and they get caught in the hair and they kind of ball up. This draws right where you want it to. It's not too heavy. It's not too hard because some of them, if they're hard, you have to press really hard. And then the skin that you're trying to, you know, pencil over the top of turns kind of red or pink. This is just the right amount of soft but not too soft and hard but not too hard. Um, the other thing that's great is it spoolies beautifully and the spoolies on here are so nice. This is one of those products. I have three unopened in this shade in a drawer because I don't ever want to be without it. And uh, the other one here is their Micro Fluff Sculpting Brow Cream. For me, because I have really teeny tiny eyebrows, it's this little tiny wand. Some people who have more voluminous eyebrows can use a wand that's a little bit bigger um, and it doesn't bother them. But if the wand gets much bigger than this, Oh, I start struggling. I really, really do. I can do kind of like a smaller, um, with, with slightly, but this little teeny tiny one is so good. The other thing that I love about this is that there are fibers in this. So on the days that I don't want to fill in my brows, but I do want to have a little something in there, this provides tint, this provides hold, and lays down fibers to mimic the look of more hair. So I go from like hair to the middle of my eyebrows and then like four little scraggly hairs to the tail to I back comb through especially the tail end I lay the fibers down then I go through kind of place everything the way I want it and is it a fully done brown brow no but it does look like I don't have bald spots in my brows those two products I can't tell you how many times I've repurchased these over and over and over and um I I love them they are like my perfect brows every time. So on the days that I don't want to try something new or I need something like this, this is what I'm reaching for. All I have left are lip products. And you know how much I love a lip product. This was probably the hardest part of it. This was literally like the agonizing. What do I do? How am I going to break this up? Okay, let me start with, I was thinking on the days when I just need comfort on my lips, what's the one gloss or lip oil that I'm going to reach for? Because I always need a gloss or a lip oil for myself. And I was like, this. So this is Beauty Pie's Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil. It is both a gloss and a lip oil. It is the most cushiony, beautiful, um, doesn't stick in the corners, doesn't string and pull. You can apply with Wild Abandon. They have some really pretty shades. I love, 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 love these. They're glossy, they're plush, they're kind of like pillowy at the same time. They're a little spency. <laughs> I remember when they used to be like $7 and now they're like 14, everything has gone up in price. But this is the one lip gloss that I have gone through more than a dozen tubes of in the last three and a half years. I mean, like, look at this. Like this one's almost out, this one's halfway gone. Um, this one here is also like down to here. Um, this one over here is like, just I just started it, but I love these. I love these so much. So these work really well on the day that I want a little bit of gloss. On the day I've been wearing a matte lipstick and my lips are like, help. You know, I'll add a layer of that. It imparts moisture. My lips, um, it's not a plumping gloss, but my lips, because there's so much moisture in that formula, my lips do look fuller because they're not dried out anymore. I love that. 
Um, and it's a little bit more on the affordable side. I mean, I love my Clarins lip oil. I love the Milani ones or the e.l.f. ones. Like there's a lot of great stuff out there. But if I had to pick one, it would be this one from Beauty Pie. Then I was thinking, okay, you get one red. Which red are you going to do? And I mean, you probably say it with me. It's Lisa Eldridge. This one is Velvet Ribbon. This is my all-time favorite red. And mine is, I mean, look used and abused down to the nub there's very little of this left but this is my not just my perfect formula my perfect red that's one swipe so this is a matte velvet lipstick and this velvet ribbon shade is for me what i want it's it's not too warm it's not too cool it's kind of like right in the middle and this is my perfect red I love how it wears, doesn't dry my lips out. I recently was going through and ranking all of my luxury matte lipsticks. Um, I'll link it for you here and the description box down below. And this formula, the Velvet formula, came out at number one. I mean, it it is simply, even though I have other formulas in my collection that are, you know, six and seven times as expensive as this, just, no, this, this. It's everything I want. A red lipstick to be wears well doesn't feather is comfortable doesn't dry my lips out fantastic and I was thinking if I need a nude lipstick which nude would I pick and I have so many and I'm, I'm I don't know that I made the right choice but this is the one that I'm currently obs obsessed with and it's from Prada this is the soft matte formula this is the shade Tiepolo it's so pretty it's kind of like a pink leaning matte but for me it's the fact that the formula is so different it is not as pigmented as this, it's so much sheerer, but it feels like lip balm going on. It feels like, like there's really hardly anything on your lips but moisture. It is so good. I love, I love. This one is definitely more expensive than the Lisa Eldridge. They're both an experience, but those would be the ones that I would pick. And then I was like, you know what? I've been such in a brown mood, but I love a glossy lip. What would I get? And I was like, this. This is the Dior Attic Shine, and this is the shade number 716. I think it's called Canage, but it's kind of like a warmer, kind of a light brown, but it's not too much. And this goes with so many things. Again, another one that is comfortable, that is nourishing, that feels good on the lip. That's what I need every single one of my lip products to be. Um, just like the ones from Beauty Pie, those Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oils. You cannot be on my lips and dry them out. <laughs> Refuse. I am currently obsessed not just with glossy lips from a product like this, but kind of like a gloss and stick formula. And my new favorite is the YSL Candy Glaze. I have three of these. I picked up one, and this is the shade I picked up in number 15. It is so pretty. It's a pretty nude, but do you see how much more opaque and glossy it is? It's a very different type of product, but I thought with all of these, you know, shades, I could probably get a really wide range of looks from glossy to matte. It's kind of everything I think I would need. I don't wear a lot of pink, but every now and again, I have a craving for a pink or kind of like a berry toned lipstick. And I thought if I was gonna pick one lipstick that kind of sits in that kind of mauve pinky range, what would it be? This is the other formula that I'm obsessed with from Lisa Eldridge. This is the shade Painterly, and it's it's not really a pink, but it has pinkness in it. It's not really kind of like a brown or a mauve or a berry tone. It's, it's kind of like a chameleon because if you're wearing really bright tones, this pulls more pink. If you're wearing kind of more muted tones, it pulls more brown. Um, if you're wearing a lot of cool tones that tend to have some purples in them, it can look more berry. This is one of my favorite shades because it's like a chameleon on the face. But this luxuriously lucent formula is so comfortable. And this, I feel like these lip shades here would kind of get me through just about anything that I need. Now, I would want lip liners because the older I get, I can't do without a lip liner. And I thought I could probably get two lip liners, like a bold lip liner, I would need a red. So my favorite one would be the accompanying one from Lisa Eldridge. This one here is in Velvet Ribbon. These lip liners are just the best. Love them so much. They don't budge once they set, they don't go anywhere. But I like how perfectly it makes my red lip look effortless and then it stays all day. The other lip liner shade I need, and I always buy them like a red and a nudie pink. 
And I kind of hate saying it, but I love the Charlotte Tilbury liner, the lip cheat, and pillow talk. I know everyone's like, ah, pillow talk. But for me, it is a really perfect shade. It could go with any of these lipsticks here. It works really well with this one. Um, I, I really like it. I also feel like this formula is great. Now, full-size lip liner is usually much taller, but the fact that these guys are short and squat just means that I have been using them a lot. These are the sorts of lip liners I was thinking, yeah, which two would I get? These would be the ones that I get. I mean, I could probably get two from Lisa Eldred, probably get Muse and uh, Ribbon, or I could get, you know, two from Charlotte Tilbury, I'd get Pillow Talk and a different red, like the red carpet red or something and be fine. But the truth is, I do love both of these formulas. They both wear like a champ and they're the two types of shades that I have in so many different formulas, a red and a nudie pink. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted you to think about this as these are the products that I would instantly want to repurchase. Some of them I'd have to, you know, get mailed to me. Um, other ones, you know, you can only get on the website from the brand. Some of them are international products. <laughs> um, and like the ones from Beauty Pie, I know Beauty Pie is a, a UK retailer. They do have um, a warehouse here in the States now. But a lot of these things, you couldn't just walk into one location and get all at the same time. Um, I, I get that. But if I were to go through and say, out of this category, out of this category, what's the top one right now? The one that I am like... I would have to get. These are those items. That doesn't mean that any other products I've mentioned before aren't still favorites. I mean, there's so much out there that is just fantastic, but these are the ones that work well enough for me that I would be like, I don't care that I'm paying 60 what dollars for this Gucci bronzer. I needs must have another one. <laughs> that's, the, that's the place that I'm at right now. I want to know what would be on your list of products you would instantly repurchase. Which would be products that you're like, I can't live without? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget, I'm also gonna link in the description box that luxury lipstick video ranking all of my matte lipsticks. Um, I will also have down there links to all of these guys that I mentioned. And just keep in mind, if you use those links, they are affiliate links and I do get a little bit of a kickback. It's a great way to help support my channel. Um, but let me know what products are the ones that you can't live without, the ones that if you lost everything, you're on a trip in the middle of Europe and your bag gets lost, what are you instantly like, oh, I would love to have. Let me know what it is in the comment section below. Have an incredible day. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you again soon.